obviously you had a very long career with many records, many hits. Uh, why, why just now a greatest hits record? That's a good question. It was nothing to do with me, really. It was to do with, I think, that the way that, that music is uh, digested now, the, the, the turnover is, is better to be consistent, more consistent. So as opposed to disappearing for a while, doing this new record, which is not that far off, um, my management were like, it's a really good opportunity to like um, celebrate what you've done over 30 years. And this is a good time to, to uh, do that and have a fresh start for, the, for next year and, and build up the next Greatest Hits record. Well, you're going to have to work another 30 years yeah, to have that. Of course, absolutely. Can't yeah. wait. And uh, so, yeah, it was just as simple as that, really. And, and you know, the funny thing is, is that I, I didn't really want to do it because I thought it was like a sign of creative weakness that you were just sort of resting on your laurels more than kind of moving on with a new record. But actually, I think I was wrong because it really is sometimes in life you have to take stock of what you have and what you've done. And as a unit, that means all the people that have given us any TLC, any love, any attention over these years. And it's like, amazing because these shows the the room is just filled with people with nothing but memories and uh, their entire life history is somehow uh, reflected in, in these songs along with other things but it's just so it makes it quite magical i wasn't prepared for that how about if you look at the audience you must see several generations absolutely yeah is that does that freak you out well it's funny um when i toured with institute with you too I'd never seen a band with a following that were like, you know, fans since 82, you know, and all these people. I was thinking, oh, God, they, they, they mind being dated like that. They mind that. And multi-generational. And I had a, a, a woman the other night who came with her grandson. She looked so, super cool. So the grandson, I just thought it was such a cool, neat idea, though, to go to rock shows with your grandma. Now, let's, let's go wild. back to 1994, yeah. okay? If we had look back from 1994 we're talking about 1964 right. so the difference wow in in the the difference in i don't know the perception. i don't like where this conversation is going no but but what, <laughs> what you need we're in a cul-de-sac i feel like we're in a cul-de-sac maybe I, I i don't know but um it's, it it's, is wild when we spoke last time we were kids we, i felt like it we um we talked about how it was, what it was like being a band in the pre-internet age, mm -hmm. becoming a band in the post-internet age, and how everything has changed. Now, you were part of that cohort with you know, the Foo Fighters and Oasis and, and uh, you know, a ton of other bands in the 90s, Green Day, Offspring, mm -hmm. who were part of that last cohort of consensus rock bands. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you come to the 2000s, and everything has to change and everything has to adapt. Not everybody has. You have. Well, you don't want to be a Luddite. You don't want to, you know, which in, for anyone who doesn't realize that it's you know, stuck in the past. Just try and embrace everything. It's so funny, isn't it? Because we've just gone through the whole thing with um, the actors and the writers um, and the striking because of AI and musicians just rolled over and took the streaming and Mm. All that thing because we not, don't have any unions. We just do the best we can as musicians. We just take what we're given, and it's um, sink or swim. And I still feel that every day, um, there's certain bands that are in exalted positions, and certain bands that like have a great following and a great history. But still, I'm still in the UFC in the octagon every day when mm. I'm in it. You know, I can't, I can't coast. I can't make it a, a moderately good record. I have to make it the most essential, wild, vibrant, vital music possible just to stay alive. And I think it's a really healthy place to be. I feel good about this position. And we, yeah, I try and embrace social media and do the best we can with it. But it's, um, you know, I, 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 you, I sort of feel like everyone's always running after against this anti-social media, mm. you know. Did I get my algorithm right? You know, it's just like annoying, you know, we should be able to like well, make great music. You're and... gaming the technology. That's yeah. what it's become. You, you know, how do I write a song so that the person listening on Spotify doesn't skip it after five seconds? Yeah, start with the chorus. Yeah, you start with the chorus, <laughs> short introduction, yeah. lots of hooks. But you've heard that on radio, how certain, especially in rock music, has become it's very formulaic. It's quite hard to find distinctive rock voices because 
it's quite um, homogenized, the, the format, you know, radio format and stuff like that. And that's again the algorithm. So it's a dangerous thing. I mean, you know, a band like Tool sounds like crazy, you know. Here's our new 12 minute single. <laughs> I know. I love them for that, but you can't, if, you, if I do that, this won't get played. Mm. <laughs> Sayonara, buddy. <laughs> so you have to be um, inside the building to cause the trouble. You can't be ostracized and be some kind of a, you know, I mean, the independent world is a sort of a, is a almost a distant memory. It's quite hard. You know, everything is trying to fit into a grid. Mm. So you've alluded a couple of times to a new record. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. It's, I'm so excited about it. As I say, seven songs in. If I, I don't think there should be more than nine songs on a record. It's a waste of time. So I'm real close. From January, February, we're going to make it, finish it up, and then bring it out for the summer. So, okay, it's been, a, again, we've been in the business for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're young, you're angry, you're, you're full of energy, you're hopped up, you're poor, you're eating, you know, glue paste. I'm all of those things apart from the poor. Okay. Still. So uh, where do lyrical ideas come from now? Life, I mean, it's fucking challenging. You know, I mean, you go through so much. Life, you know, either death and divorce are gonna, um, are the hardest things to go through. I went through a divorce, it's really, really good. That's yeah, I, I heard something about mind that. Mind fuck of life. Um, and very, very powerful and, and uh, a heavy weight to carry, you know. Um, and then just general life and the, the challenges of my life is no different to yours from, People developing, you know, mortal illnesses, losing people, losing friends, suicides, I mean, like drug overdoses, uh, babies, um, weddings, funerals, uh, divorces, just everything. And the world's on fire. You have to look out your window and, you know, it's like everyone's forgot there's a war in the Ukraine because of this terrible situation in the Middle East. And no one knows what to do. And if you, whatever you say, you're wrong. And whatever you say, you're right. It's just a fucking mess. So it's so great doing music because it's it's such a galvanizing uh, element. You know, it's such a great glue that we, I make people come out every night in support of a consistently um, peaceful and connected mindset. You know what I mean? Like our music shows, we there's no division. There's the opposite of division. It's completely inclusive. So I'm just proud that in this world that mo our small part is to bring together a whole bunch of people and give them an amazing time and hopefully elevate them away from everything in, that they walked in with you know that's what the power of music so let's look at 2024 you said that you're going to be recording in january february mm -hmm. record in the summer mm -hmm. then what you know the same old same old just go out and play and slog it and leave my family and uh get um hotel room service and just go sing my heart out and just uh, do what I love and I it's just weird artisans you know we could have made noodles but we make songs and that's it what's what's it like for you on the road I mean is it hotel room bus airplane stage well to a certain extent yeah I mean it's it's the opportunity to connect with all the people that have um, supported us and you know, it's, it's what we do. It's, it's the only thing I know how to do. I'm trying to do my clothing line, a TV show, everything. But everything's even harder than music. So I just do what I'm Okay, best wait, at. wait, wait, wait. TV show? Well, yeah, I've been trying to do this interview, this cooking show that I've been trying to get going for. Um, I Right, I heard about mm -hmm. that. but So I keep getting close, and then the people, it's just, it's, it's not easy. All right, let's, let's talk cooking. Why do you think that you can do a cooking show? Um... Well, same reason I think I can do anything, you know, complete blind arrogance and faith in some higher sense of purpose. Uh, basically, I wanted to stay home. I can cook. I actually have a weird ability to cook. I mean, I just do a lot of European food, Mediterranean diet stuff, okay. English roast. And so I love it. And I thought, what a fun opportunity. It's almost like doing a podcast with someone, you know, and then feeding them um, food and drink and getting to the heart of who different people are. So it's, on paper, it's a great thing, um, but getting it made is a little bit more challenging. Okay, I have a pretty good kitchen at home. Mm -hmm. I'm inviting you over to cook. To show off your culinary skills, what would you do for us? 
Uh, maybe I'd like poach some langoustines in a little bouillon, start off with a nice aioli. Okay. And then maybe I would I would just rock I would rock something simple, well simple, elegant, but like a, a beef wellington. Do you eat meat? Yes. So beef wellington. You know, with a pomp puree, you know. Anything more? Dessert. Anything more? Dessert. Uh, yeah, I would make you um a goat cheese cheesecake. Oh good. Oh my wife loves goat cheese. Okay, there you go. All right, so I'm very expensive, though. Uh, that's okay. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're aware, but <laughs> we should discuss that before you commit. Um, how about the clothing line? Also expensive. Yes. No. Uh, to and, me, and, and prone a to sea of failure. sound. Oh, fuck, don't say that. Don't say that. Well, talk to Liam Gallagher, and he'll tell you how expensive and difficult a clothing line is. His were all Parkers. Like, uh, they were remember. anorak type stuff, yeah. Yeah, anorak, yeah. which makes sense because he seems to live in them. But I don't know nothing about him. But um, it's I actually, I'm good at making things. I am clothing. Yeah, when I it's sea of sound, it's called, and people really love it. Yet again, much like the TV show, it's selling it. That's mm -hmm. the, the that's a big thing in business. So I'm just in the process of finding out who there is. My first big order starts in a store called Kitson, which is a very big store in America. Um, a gift store, like a, a high-end, trendy boutique. And so they've just taken my Nutrition Facts. I did a, it's called the Nutrition Facts, which is the how we start the label. Like food labels, you know, mm -hmm. food facts yep. on the back of things. I did one for a guide for humanity called the Nutrition Facts. It's a pretty cool way to start the, the, the label because it's the story of how we'd like to live in a very humanity focused, the way to live in an inclusive, uh, positive world. It's very Canadian. Yes. It's, What's a, the, it's very Canadian. Let's go back to the greatest hits record. Why choose uh, Come Together by the Beatles for the cover on the greatest hits? We hadn't had a chance to use it. Uh, it's a great song, very well written, little cheeky to put on our greatest hits. Uh, I would think, but again, it was a management decision. I and think Aerosmith so, did it once. So I hide behind my management on that one. They're very smart people, smarter than I am. So. Okay, who, who have you got playing drums now? Uh, Nick, Nick, Nick Hughes. He's incredible. He's brought a lease of life to the band that was gravely needed, and he he Benjamin buttoned the band. So we're more lethal than. We just played with Slipknot, we just played with Lamb of God, you know. No one minds, no one's like, what? See, that's, like, that's not a pairing I would suggest. Yeah, but people don't care because the new stuff is so hard and, and so heavy, and I still sing in my particular way. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. I never forfeited that, but I just changed up the music to give it some serious um, chutzpah. I've been with you guys, with you since 16 stone. I mean, I remember. Since we were in short trousers. Yes. When we met, our mums introduced us. I, I bet. Yes, they must have. I saw something today. It came in one of my newsletters today. And uh, it was a guide to longevity in music. Be the quiet legend. Uh, Just be someone who can be relied upon year after year to put out music and to tour and just to exist. Well, it sounds like us, doesn't it? I always think we, we exist just below, whatever line we're just below, it allows us, it just allows us to always be slight, I always feel slightly underrated, slightly hungry, slightly aggressive, slightly defensive. And I think that's, that bodes well, as opposed to sort of being bigger, more well-fed, more rotund and playing an acoustic. Mm. It's just not, I just feel vital like this. I'm just, I'm ready. I'm ready to be attacked. I'm not sort of unguarded.